wish I had a storm warning I'm gonna wish I had a sign I'm gonna wish I had a little heads up Little leave way a little more time Okay, so in Hinduism, um, a person is seen as incomplete if they don't marry. Most girls in India marry before puberty, so like before 16. And the legal, I found it interesting that the legal age for marriage for girls in India was 18, whereas for boys it was 21. So a male's family is responsible for arranging the marriage. It's the same in Islam. Um, and the matchmaker is called Nyan. Marriage is seen as kind of like the coming together of families. So Hinduism divides its followers into four major castes, and within those castes are thousands of subcastes, each with a particular role and profession. So your match should be of your subcaste with relatively equal socioeconomic background, be of your region, and share your religion. So when a girl gets of a marriageable age, the neon, or sometimes they call them aunties, although they might not necessarily be related to the family, does extensive research on um, legible bachelors through connections to find um, the family that's hired her a suitable match for their son or daughter. Um, families might also hire a marriage broker and now that it's, the mod it's kind of like the modern age um, there have been websites set up such as baratmatrimony.com where someone creates a profile that clearly states their caste, religion, and other information that people might be interested in. Um, Barat Matrimony has more than 20 million profiles worldwide. Okay, so now I'm going to speak a little bit on Muslim arranged marriages strictly in India. Um, it is a Muslim parent's duty to marry their daughters and provide for their education. Um, a girl child is called a Pargahiri, which literally translates as made for someone else's house. So a groom's parents must make the initial move towards marriage, not the bride's. Um, a groom's father will usually send like a letter to the bride's father through a uh, Malvi. Um, and this is often done when the child is still a toddler. If the bride's father accepts, then there's like an asking ceremony, which is different from the wedding, which can take and which fr different from the wedding which takes place years later. Um, if a woman is unwed and older than twenty four, she's considered a spinster and very often her family will turn her out. When dealing with arranged marriages, there are many pros and cons that are associated with it. There are several pros of arranged marriages. For starters, it is a way of uniting and maintaining the difference between the rich upper class and society and the poor lower class society. Arranged marriages were earlier seen as a way of promoting caste systems or racism. So it was a way for the upper caste to protect their community and maintain their social status. Arranged marriages give the parents control over family matters and members. They get to select someone who is best for their daughter or son. Contrary to what you may think, good arranged marriages do happen, especially when the parents support and help their children to find their life partners based on the desires and likings. Because overall mutual consent and understanding are the only ways a marriage can sustain. Arranged marriages by their families have similar religious, financial, and social backgrounds, which research has shown are important factors in lasting relationships. Arranged marriages are also believed to last longer than regular marriages. In an article discussing the pros and cons of arranged marriages from the Daily Princetonian, one Indian student said, in a lot of ways, it is easier. I don't have pressure to look for a boyfriend. A lot of stress is put on education for me, so you don't have time to think about boys. She believes that more attention should be given to studies than boys. She also said, I really don't see love as a major factor. What I look for in marriage is stability. But on the other side of it, another Indian student said, How can you marry someone you met four times? How love could happen along the way? Which is just one of the the many cons of arranged marriages. Some more of the cons of arranged marriages are that it is used as a medium to promote racism and class system, and it is also the best medium to take dowry. Arranged marriages can seem more like a trade than a marriage because it can be an easy way to make money. An obvious drawback of arranged marriages is that the girl and boy do not know each other. 
and the chances are high that they won't gel well. They have different views. The marriage can quickly turn into more of a compromise than a marriage. The only way it can work out is if one accepts the other how they are and they reach a mutual level of understanding. Dowries are a large part of arranged marriages in India. Today, the parents of the groom demand the dowries, and the marriage only happens if the bride's parents pay a certain amount of dowry, supposedly serving as compensation to the parents of the groom for how much they spend on education and raising their son. And if a good dowry cannot be made, the chances of a good match are very slim. So, for example, a good match for a very poor family would be marrying their daughter into a slightly better finance family, and a good match for a middle-income family would be finding your daughter a husband who is a doctor or an engineer. There's a good side and a bad side to dowries in India. On the good side, the bread's dowry often gets spent in the household for the good of the entire family, such as supplying food for the family throughout the years. But on the bad side, certain families will be selfish and use the entire bride's dowry for their own sake, or save it for their own daughter's dowry. When the dowry demanded is not met, the brides have a history of being tortured and most times killed. The girls get tortured so bad they cannot take the pain anymore and decide to take their own life. Or in other cases, the method of bride burning takes place, where the wives are set on fire and then the evidence is disguised as an accident to steer clear of all punishments. The police receive over 2,500 reports of bride burning each year out of the total 9,000 dowry deaths each year. Although the dowry deaths may scare you into thinking no good comes from arranged marriages, there are some positive effects, such as social compatibility. When couples are paired, they usually have very similar religious and cultural beliefs, which avoids many arguments because they understand each other. The matching up of personalities is another. Parents know their children and know their personalities, and they choose a husband or wife that they think would be compatible in personality. It is also beneficial for shy people, for people who don't get the chance to meet someone. Arranged marriages could potentially be the only way some people will be able to find a spouse. And of course, low divorce rate is another great effect of arranged marriages. Arranged marriages have a much lower divorce rate than Western love-based marriages. They currently have the lowest divorce rate in the world at 1.1% in India. Following the positive effects of arranged marriages come the negative effects. First off, it's a mystery. You have no idea what you're getting into or what to expect. So you're making a long-term commitment without knowing very little about your spouse. Whereas non-arranged marriages often come from years of dating and learning everything about each other before making the same long-term commitment as in arranged marriages. Not only that, but it begins to be all about the family. Arranged marriages tend to focus more on each other's families than the actual individuals getting married. You aren't just marrying your spouse, you are marrying their family as well, which can sometimes make your individual wants or needs a second priority behind the family's wants and needs. And that leads to the last negative effect. The stakes are high for divorce. Families are a large part of arranged marriages, and if one ever decided to get a divorce, the consequences are severe. Oftentimes, a divorce can mean being disowned by your family, or creating a bad relationship with them. Since the consequences are so severe, even if the marriage isn't working at all, most people don't get divorced because they're not just losing their husbands, but it would mean they're losing their family as well. Okay, so what makes arranged marriage so important? Why is it so widely practiced um, in India? Well, dating in India is taboo because it goes against a lot of cultural norms. A lot of value is placed on the family as a unit, and the theory is that parents will take care of their children, find them spouses from appropriate families so the child is ensured a solid future. The system is intended to take care of the disparities of religion, caste, and class. Um, so I talked about caste a little earlier, you know, how it's divided. Um, the caste system was made illegal in India many years ago, but it's still a system that a lot of Indians uphold and believe in. Um, so arranged marriages have been practiced in India since actually the fourth century. And they're done, they used to be done with children while the children were still under control of their parents so that they didn't rebel or marry outside of their caste, which would bring shame upon the family. 
Um, and I found it interesting that arranged marriages are prevalent among the educated middle class, a lot more so than the lower class, because they don't want their children marrying down. And there's also a fear of the of their children making inappropriate choices that would lead to a divorce, a la the United States. It's also seen as a very good way to continue the ancestral lineage of a family. But I keep climbing.